where we have a chance to visit with newcomer Kyle Gibson, but you've been around the game for a long time. Let's talk about your pitch repertoire because you sure. have a very extensive one. So show us your grips. <laughs> yeah, I try to throw about everything that I can. <laughs> uh, I've got the standard four seam grip. Um, and then off of that, I moved to a cutter. I started throwing in 2021 after talking with Lance and a couple other guys uh, just about how they threw it. Um, one that I've thrown my whole career. I've shifted a little bit every now and then just to kind of work on the movement, but my two seamer, uh, really get this pointer finger right here on this inside horseshoe and, mm -hmm. and let the pointer finger do the work. Um, throw my circle change right off of that. Put uh, my two fingers on the right side of the seam, just try to avoid cutting it. So if I feel like I have you know, my fingers here, I can really roll it this way and get it to you know tumble like my two seam. Um, curveball, really been tinkering with this one the last couple of years. Just I, I don't have a, a natural curveball aptitude to spin the ball. So I really got to get my hand in the right spot and, and really have to get, you know, finger pressure and, and um, leverage in the right spot to get it to spin. Um, and then, you know, my sweeper that I slider, sweeper, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I still call it a slider because I literally went from here on my slider to here on my sweeper and somehow it changed it. Obviously, you know, a lot different, but, uh, you know, my sweeper trying to. And get some sideways movement on it. You know, it's funny you talk about the sweeper. That seems like that's the weapon of choice these days. Mm -hmm. And everybody describes it differently, but most people say it's kind of a sideways curveball. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that really is if you look at the movement on it. Um, I've never been able to throw the curveball with a lot of, you know, vertical break. Mm -hmm. You know, normally I'm right at 8 to 10 maybe on vertical break. Um, but because I'm a high slot, you know, I'm able to get a good angle on that pitch to make it appear like it breaks more. So, um on the sweeper for me, like I literally started tinkering with my slider one bullpen at the end of 2022, just the pitching coach asked me if I wanted to in Philly. I said, sure. And I literally just took my grip and went from here to there just to try to just leverage the seam. Just not, a, not even like yeah. maybe, maybe move my, my middle finger, maybe a half an inch just to get it to come out just a little bit different. But I mean, it's, it's a two plane breaker that, that just moves more than hitters you know appear to see so for a person who throws so many pitches what's your bullpen like on a game day i mean you're you're out there getting loose are you trying to use everything or do you uh, just have a feel on a game day it's it's pretty basic it's you know i i used to throw way too many pitches warming up i'd be tired going into the game mm -hmm. um i try to keep it to 25 or less and it's three heaters arm side three hit <laughs> one of each right four seam two seam cutter four seam two seam cutter arm side Two of each off-speed pitch, I do that from the windup and the stretch, and that's it. Like I'm not, if I'm working on stuff at that point, it's too late. Like I'm, True. I am, I'm getting loose, right? I'm, I'm warming up. You know, I'm not trying to perfect my fastball. I'm not trying to perfect my changeup before I go to the game. Like I'm gonna get loose, and then the first thing we're gonna see what we got, and, and uh, if we gotta make an adjustment, we make an adjustment. You're an innings eater as well, so tell me how's that work for you? Because we see a lot of guys five and fly, maybe six, but you stick around for a while. Yeah, it's something that uh, in Minnesota was really important. And then I feel like as I talked to, to Lance and a couple other veterans, you know, Jake Rizzi in Minnesota, um, a couple other guys in Texas when I was there, and then, you know, Wheeler and Nola in Philly, just really getting a sense of like, all right, this is something that is really important for the team, being able to get deeper in the game and making the bullpen job easier. And the more innings they cover on a Monday – Probably means the less innings they can cover on a Tuesday and then even less innings on a Wednesday. So if you can be that guy that can just you know be consistently getting into the seventh, maybe you're not finishing it, but you're getting into the seventh and then you're limiting those outs, um, it's really important. But I do that by being able to kind of have a short memory when you have a bad inning. You know, many yeah. times in my career I wasted innings is what I what I call it. Like I wasted innings or I left innings on the table because I would have a bad second and a bad third, and then mentally I was out of it, and then I'm getting pulled in the fourth. Um, instead of being able to say, okay, I had a bad second inning, now I'm onto a clean third inning. There should be nothing keeping me from a clean third inning, nothing keeping me from a clean fourth inning. Um, and I was able to kind of take certain outings where maybe I had a bad first and second, and then before you know it, I'm in the sixth inning because you're able to have a little bit of a short memory, yeah. get back to your preparation, get back to what makes you who you are, and, yeah, you might have blown it in the first inning, but that doesn't keep you from getting through five or six. Give me one thing or three things you can tell young pitchers, because this, this game of pitching continues to change as far as philosophy and approach. But for you, what have been the three basics that you think are important for anybody who wants to pitch? Um, 
I think as you figure out who you are, which is part of it, like figure out what kind of pitcher you want to be and maybe what kind of pitcher you can be, right? Maybe those two don't match up. You know, mm -hmm. maybe maybe you want to be a guy that has a big curveball and a high four-seamer. It doesn't matter how much I want to be that guy. I'm not that guy. So, like, you know figure, your strengths. You got to know your strengths. So, figure out who you want to be and figure out who you are and then never lose sight of that, right? So, that's kind of a two-parter. Don't lose sight of what your identity is on the mound. I've been there. I've, I've veered away from my strengths, trying to find something in the midst of a struggle. And the best thing you can do in the midst of a struggle is remember what you're good at and then lean on it. And then the next day when you go back out there, maybe you'll have some better stuff and maybe you'll be able to, you know, use all your weapons, but don't forget that. Um, and I think, I think the last one, the more I've gotten in tune with my delivery, it's really helped me make adjustments on the fly. I have a couple physical cues by knowing what causes your pitches to be off and then have a couple of physical cues to get you back online, right? Mm -hmm. So an easy one for me is my back leg. I know that if my back leg is working right and my back hip is getting in the right position, that squares up my upper body, squares up my hand to release. And most of the times, if you see me hit my back hip or you see me in a bullpen working, I'm really just focusing on getting that back hip close because I truly believe if I get that first move right, then everything down the chain takes care of itself. Final question for Kyle Gibson with the grip. Let's say you have 30, 33 starts during a year. How many times do you come out of the bullpen feeling like, yeah, I'm ready to go? <laughs> and then it doesn't work compared to you come out, you say, man, I don't know if I have anything today. The next thing you know, you're in the eighth inning. I'll tell you what, I, I try to stop and I try to not take stock in how I feel walking out of the mm -hmm. pen. Um, because just as many times as I felt great walking out of the pen and I give up four runs in the second, <laughs> there's been times where I walk out of the pen and I tell the catcher, I say, hey, I don't know what we got today. I know that warm up wasn't good. Let's just let's just grind through this. And then before you know it, like you said, you're in the seventh inning. Maybe you give up a run or two, but all of a sudden somehow you figure it out how to get to the seventh. Um, I try to more take stock in how like I feel, not how my stuff feels. Yeah. You know, be in tune with physically, maybe today I don't feel as physically good. So let's use that as an adjustment. Um, and let's kind of go from there because I might not land a single slider when I'm warming up out of the four that I throw because I only throw four of them, right? Mm -hmm. I, I'm not trying to tune in a pitch. I really figure out in the first, second inning what I got. And that's when you and the catcher got to work together and say, all right, what do we legitimately have working today? And let's make <laughs> stay sure with we, that. let's stay with that. Kyle Gibson, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. He's you. Kyle Gibson. That's another installment of The Grip.